Uh, I was informed by Yvonne that she will not be attending this evening, Bill. So it looks like you have a full house of uh, board members that you're going to We have a full house. Sweet. I'm all in. Where are <laughs> I'm afraid to go there now. <laughs> where, where are we in? In Hollywood Squares, obviously. Uh, Tell him what he won. <laughs> <laughs> he won a weekend for two in the shack down the street. <sighs> in the maintenance now shed. Our, now our squares are off. I know we uh, don't have an even number on each row. They don't, they don't make game it's shows like they used to. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Tic-tac-toe. Uh, hey, Eric, before we go live, can I ask a quick, super fast question? Uh, you can ask. We'll find out if I'll answer it or not. Okay. Um, if the directors want to discuss something that is totally not a, 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 a like a oh, yeah. neighborhood <laughs> business... Um, if it is not business of the district, you are welcome to discuss it. You guys can, you know, have lives and talk amongst yourselves. Right. You're just not allowed to discuss district business beyond a quorum of other members outside of a publicly noticed meeting. Okay. If we... So <laughs> with, with that being noted, how about um, for those of us who know what I'm talking about, do you want to just quickly chat right after this? After the meeting? Uh, yeah. Sure, yes. but Eric, but can Eric pass the host... No, 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 no. We can just, we can, we can, uh, I'll set something up for my computer. It's okay, fine. That's and, all and I'm I, saying is that he's, he's the host. So right. disconnects, we all disconnect. Right. Unless he passes the torch. So we would need to have a separate meeting, right? Yeah. Unless, unless Eric, you want, you can keep it open and just like, I don't know, go in the other room or something. Yeah. I, I wouldn't <laughs> really suggest that. Okay. Yeah. No, like you. You guys figure out all that on your own. Okay. Good idea. Yeah, I just stress. Uh, you, you can't. You, no, you, it's no. This is not, not board business. Yeah. No. Okay, then that's fine. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Well, I just do my part to make that. Okay. It is not board Great. business. Well, on that note, then, <laughs> since that's cleared, it is seven thirty-two. I guess we could start. Recording in progress. Okay, attention. This will be a virtual meeting of the Marinwood CSD Board of Directors. There will not be a public location for participating in this meeting. Any interested member of the public can participate telephonically or via internet by utilizing the web link or dial-in information printed on this agenda. At points in the meeting, when the meeting chair requests public comment, members of the public participating in the live meeting, either via internet or telephone, shall indicate their desire to speak. If participating via internet, please click the raised hand feature located within the Zoom application screen. If connected via telephone, please dial star nine. And on that note, can I have a call to order, please? Board President Shea. I'm here. Excellent. Director Case. Here. Director Kilkenny. Here. Director Ruggieri. Here. And I am noting that Director Oysterman is absent. Okay, on to B, the agenda. We're going to adopt the agenda. Does anybody have any changes? Uh, so moved, I guess. Do we call Eric for? Nope, just adoption. Cool. No changes. Consent calendar. We have three items coming up, and one of them is the resolution that we're doing every month, it seems. And the draft minutes and the bills paid. We need to approve these. Can I hear a motion? I move to approve the consent calendar, um, including items resolution 2021-12, making findings and confirming the need to continue conducting remote meetings via teleconference of the Board of Directors, Fire Commission, and Park and Recreation Commission. Item B, draft minutes of regular 
meeting of November 9th, 2021. Item C, bills paid numbers 5907 through 5975. I second that. Any uh, comments, questions? <laughs> Yeah, Bill, the only thing I would add in is I, I I made the decision kind of to just add this resolution because now it's just becoming a normal and recurring piece of ordinary business, uh, which is what falls under the consent calendar. So I have put it here. And then also to confirm that I know the language is a little tricky in this, but the uh, while it says you have to revisit this every 30 days, the clarification and kind of guidance I've received is that you're okay to do it after 30 days, so long as you haven't had a meeting after 30 days. So neither of these bodies have met after 30 days since the last re resolution was passed. Okay. <laughs> what yes, would here be it is. The, That's okay with me. Yeah. What would be the process to, if the, when the time comes, we go back into in person, would we just bring it up and add it as an agenda? item to say we are going back into person? Uh, yeah, or you just simply wouldn't remove, uh, I would continue to approve this. I mean, that's a good question. I think that would probably be a good agenda item to say, you know, kind of set your conditions or, uh, or uh, requirements for going back to a public uh, in-person meeting, you know, specific to this body. Okay. Uh, and go from there. But I, you know, given the state of things, I, I don't know that I see that happening anytime soon, especially with some of the requirements that the state just levied uh, effective at 12.01 a.m. today, tomorrow. I don't foresee it. I just wanted to ask. Yeah, no, it would just, it'd be a decision of the board. Okay, thanks. Yep. Anything else? Anything from the public? Uh, yeah, one second, Bill. Stephen, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Go, Go ahead, Stephen. Yeah, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, this is regarding the uh, telephonic uh, conferences. Uh, I, I kind of like them, um, but um, since you guys are a public body and not a single one of you has uh, been elected in your latest terms, you've all been appointed. Um, I think there is an affirmative act, uh, responsibility on the board's part to be a little bit more public, and I would uh, request that you do the following. Um, first of all, while this meeting is uh, recorded, I would say record all of the board meetings. Um, if I weren't recording some of these uh, meetings, there would be zero record. Uh, there would just be that uh, the uh, the most briefest of outline of business that was conducted. Um, this board has committed uh, the largest capital uh, improvement project, maybe in the history of the district, uh, but certainly uh, a very expensive project. There was very little public input on that. There was request for that. And, you know, you guys just have to do a better job. Um, we need to know uh, where you stand on things. Uh, it shouldn't be a mystery what the CSD does or who's serving on the board. You guys really should be uh, leaders in our community. And uh, so uh, I think having these virtual meetings makes it a little tough. We're not uh, uh, doing a rigorous job of announcing them. We don't have a board that post, uh, post our meetings. Um, it's really, really quite lax. And uh, uh, if you're proud of your work, you should certainly let people know what you're doing. So thank you. Thank, thank you, Stephen. Okay, can, can I, I call, call for, for a vote? vote? Board of President Chen. Chen. Aye. Director Case? Aye. Director Kilkenny? Aye. Director Ruggieri? Aye. 
Thanks. On to item D, public comment, open time for items not on the agenda. One second. Stephen. Hi. Uh, so it's almost 2022 and uh, three of the directors have spent the last their first year uh, on the CSD board and uh, uh, the other directors have been with us for a while. Um, and I would ask you the question, you know, what what have you done this year um, to actualize a vision for our community? What have you done to for outreach into the community? Have you shared the vision of uh, the future, not just with your friends and your social circles, but but there's literally 6,000 people that live in this valley. What are we doing to, to do that outreach? It's important. It's important uh, not only for your legacy, but it's important um, for our local um, community to know the good works that you, you have uh, done and that you're planning for the future. Um, since none of you served, uh, none of you went through the election process, you didn't, the public never had an opportunity to get to know you, to get to know your vision. Uh, and really the only people who, you know, basically everyone's working off their social circles and it's, it's really quite, quite small. And, um, Maybe you're not comfortable in front of big crowds, but uh, I do think uh, it could be something that would uh, be beneficial for us all. Uh, after all, uh, you don't want to have this time that you serve to be wasted. Uh, you, you know, you're important, you're important uh, voice in our community and you're, you're guiding our future uh, as well as committing uh, significant uh, policies and uh, uh, also debts onto the community. And so, so I, I think it's really necessary to sell your vision to the public. That's all I have to say. And I look forward to another uh, great year in 2022. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, anybody else, Eric? No, sir. Okie dokie, on to item E, district matters. We have the election of board officers for calendar year 2022. We're electing board president and vice president. Okay. Yeah, you're right, Bill. I put this uh, with a little staff report in there. This just comes out of the bylaws. This happens every December. And to be clear, uh, the practice has not been that they take over immediately, meaning right this second place. Uh, this role you takes see, over with the Eric, next every time you, Eric, every time you turn, we're losing your audio. Sorry, I need more. Um, the, uh, the practice has not been that uh, the Whoever gets elected or nominated at this point immediately takes over. This is effective uh, typically with the January meeting, and these are uh, with the calendar year. So regardless of what happens uh, with this bill, you'll continue to close this meeting out. And then with the January meeting, uh, the new uh, president uh, and vice president will do that. Understood. Yeah. So you don't, you don't have to leave the White House quite yet. No, I, I wasn't planning on going until the very last second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other than that, the process is simple. It's, uh, you know, they could be nominated from their peers. If somebody has an interest, that person can express an interest. And then it's a simple uh, vote by the board, motion and a vote. Oh. Is there, uh, it, what's the situation about if somebody wants to or gets elected to do it two years in a row? Is that, is that a possibility? Yes, there is no, uh, 
Eric, you. Eric, we're again losing <laughs> you. I don't, I don't know how it's happening, but literally every time you turn your head, we lose you. Hmm. Okay. Uh, That's I don't better. know why either. Must be the mic on here. But the, the, I don't believe that there are term limits. Yes, you could do it two years in a row. Okay. Awesome. Or a maximum of four. <laughs> I just can't. It just happened again. Or it's a maximum of four terms. Okay. <laughs> um, and I, just for for my own edification, uh, this cycle, Bill, of your being elected, how many more years do you have? Uh, the next election cycle. Okay, so you're up in November. Yeah. Okay. What about Savon? Same. Okay. It's like every two years. So the last election cycle were the three of right. you guys. And, and then, then the next election cycle is the opposite two. two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's how it's run. Except for the one year where we had to give ourselves an extra year to save money for the district. Gotcha. Well, that was actually a state mandate, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Tomato, tomato. tomato. <laughs> Little details. Uh, what well, is there? Is there anybody who's interested in doing it? Like, who wants to throw their own name in the hat? Um, I would be willing to throw my name in the hat for president this next year. Okay. Cool. I like that. I, I like the way this is going already. I like yeah. it. <laughs> I am not, so it's you know you not unanimous. <laughs> do we vote Unless on the Simon one, wants to. Do we vote on these one position at a time? Um, you can do it either way. You can you can uh, identify a president and a vice president and do it in one motion, or you can do it all uh, uh, one at a uh, one at a time. Okay. Can I have a follow up question? Sure. President want serve as a commissioner or a liaison as well usually usually we go we do the opposite and then okay so the usually the president and the vice president president or vice president we always took one or the other the fire or the park and recreation commission Okay. As a liaison, being one of the peons, I guess you would say, like us, normal people. Um, no, the reason why I'm asking is because next month those are up, correct? Right, and we'll, so usually everybody switches. Right. So that was my thinking of like a pre-conversation. Yeah, well and the bills. The bills point. It's usually the president. Um, that doesn't take on one of those roles. The vice president generally only fills in in the absence of the president. We have had one instance before where the president actually resigned from the board and the vice president had to fill in for the rest of the year, but that was a, a kind of a one-off situation. The, uh, otherwise, the role of the vice president is really to be at the ready in the event that the president can't serve or cannot attend a meeting. Has anybody been that Savon is the current vice president? Has I, I haven't spoken to her. Does, does anybody know if she's expressed any interest in sticking around? Um, so can we can we comment on that when if 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 someone's not here, if a board member's not here? We yeah, you can call, you can comment on it in the scope of the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, in my conversation with Savon, she she is definitely interested in serving this next year and. Um, she would be willing to take on the vice president role. Okay. Right. Too. How's that sound, everyone? I, I like. It. I would totally support you, Lisa, for being the president. I think you would be excellent at this. What Chris Thank said. You, Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. What Kathleen said. <laughs> Sweet. And then is, does that. Can we vote? We on need a motion. Wait, wait, and I vote. And, and I guess, on and I want to say something. One other thing, too. If she's not here. Yeah, one sec. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, yes, you certainly can. Okay. 
And, um, and one, you know, I guess another thing that I would, I would comment, I just kind of reiterate, I, you know, my, my, my thought would be that um, it would make sense for someone else to be the park commission if I take on the president mm -hmm. role. For sure. Mm -hmm. That's why I was asking just to make sure, because I think, again, we do it next month. Yeah. Right. And to be clear on that, there is no park commission meeting this month. So the park commission doesn't meet again and after the next board meeting. Okay. Uh, I move to name Lisa the next president of the Maroonwood Community Services District and Savon the vice president of the Community Services District for the next calendar year. A second. Uh, do we open this up to the public, Eric? I don't. You you, you do. Okay. Are you are you ready for that? Yeah, so we can go ahead and vote. <laughs> sure, one second. Steven. Yes, uh, well, uh, I would ask you what you're being nominated the president and uh, of uh, if you're not reaching out to the community. Um, this is, I, you know, I think each one of you are good in your own uh, respect, but um, honestly, I don't know what your positions are on a lot of things because you've never uh, articulated it publicly. And, you know, you all seem like nice people. Um, uh, it's not that I object to, to, uh, to you taking on these roles. It's just that I don't know what, what your vision is for the community. And if you don't have a vision for the community, why are you serving? It really, it really, it's 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 confounding to me, and and what I'm asking of this board is um, to have a public meeting and talk about um, you know where we've been at. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of events that have happened in our community. We, we're de still dealing with the pandemic. We had probably the largest uh, fire event in yes. 40, 50 years. Um, we're building a large uh, uh, structure. Um, there has been an influx of people. And another thing that's going to be on the horizon, we're going to get slammed with a lot of uh, apartment housing in this area, um, which is not part of our business, but it is part of our community. It's going to be something that we're going to need to deal with uh, in the parks and, and uh, what you guys deal with. So um, I would say, yeah, you know, make your vote tonight, but, but also make a vote, a, uh, a commitment to, to have a um, public meeting, a district-wide meeting where you can uh, express your vision. Each one of you guys can express your vision for the community. And it might get you reelected. Maybe people, maybe they want to put you at, in a higher office. I hear Damon Connolly may, may be going up to Sacramento, so maybe you got an opportunity there. So that's it. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, let's call for a vote. He's eating my dinner, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Sticky fingers. Okay. <laughs> Board President Shea. Aye. Director Case. Aye, and I thank you very much, Lisa, for stepping up. Director Kilkenny. Aye. Director Ruggieri. Aye. Thanks. Perfect. Congratulations, <laughs> Lisa. Yeah, Bill, can I just say... Um, a, it's been great working with you. You've been very accessible. I appreciate it. And uh, Lisa, I, I certainly look forward to working with you in this capacity too. And uh, we'll uh, make sure you have all of the information uh, that you need and make it as easy on you as we can. Thanks. So thank appreciate you for your it. willingness to do this. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. And don't forget to wear your glasses so you have vision. <laughs> Got him right here. <laughs> there you go.
All right, district manager reports up next. Uh, <clears throat> sure. Uh, won't go through all these things uh, word for word, but just a couple updates. Um, the fire prevention, fuel reduction, vegetation management project that we've been doing has been completed. Uh, I know the chief has some of that in his report, so I'll let speak to that a little bit more as well. Um, all I will say is that I'm just, I'm really happy with the quality of the work that was done, the quantity of the work that was performed, and we have received just a tremendous amount of positive feedback from everybody uh, that's taken the time to say anything. If you get a chance to walk along the Idleberry Trail or anywhere from the end of Peachstone all the way uh, following the roads to the county facilities, uh, I encourage you to take a look. It, it, they really did an incredibly good job and actually uh, not only with the veg management but it opened up some of that trail and accessibility as well so uh, uh, i encourage you to go look at it they did a very very good work for us for that project um as uh, once we get through the holidays and into the new year i'm sure i'll be meeting with the uh, team and professionals from santa fe fire department so we can be looking at next projects and keep the momentum moving forward um Park maintenance facility, uh, just kind of a general update for the last month on where they're at and where they intend to be. Work does continue to move along. Um, we are expecting next week to be pretty rainy, so that might slow uh, down just days a little bit, but won't necessarily push the entire schedule back. Um, we were out there this morning for what has been my coldest meeting yet, uh, meeting with the general and the architect, so uh, all things are still all systems go. Um, the Marinwood Park play structure replacement initiative. Um, obviously, this has been a long discuss, just confirming that all the required materials have been submitted to the state that are required at this point in time. They have uh, confirmed receipt and are putting together our kind of quote unquote contract with the state um, for the receipt of this grant fund. Um, and we also do have a community survey uh, out there. It is live. We've actually gotten a lot of response so far. Um, we've uh, advertised it via social media and we'll continue to do so and we also have signs encouraging participation uh, as well as making people aware at the entrances to the playground uh, with a little qr code that while your kids are playing you can scan the qr code with your phone and it'll take you straight to the survey uh, i don't have an exact number on how many have come in at this moment in time all i know is we've been getting anywhere from 10 to 18 per day it seems like so um, we're getting good feedback just to give us a little uh, uh, guidance as to what are some of the popular features that people like when it comes to the place structures and just a reminder this is a place structure replacement project this is not a playground redesign uh, the footprint of the playground will not change we're just updating and replacing the structures that are uh, within there at Marinwood Park um, and then just some other items of note, continue to work with our auditor. Um, we're still on schedule to have that done. I expect the final audit to be presented at the February meeting as it is every year. Um, we tried to get it as good as we could. Unfortunately, uh, there's only so many of us to get this done and uh, we were hoping to try to shoot for a January one, but it's gonna be February again. Um, still awaiting the allocations on December Protax. I personally have had some uh, uh, technological issues with my access to the county system that I've been going back and forth with them for the past week plus trying to resolve. I have not been able to get into the Munis system. Luckily, Tiffany can still get in and make some of the basic journal entries, but I can't go in and improve them uh, or look at any of the other things. So I've literally had daily conversations and I'm scheduled for more with the county IT department on why all of a sudden my account doesn't have access like it did last week. Um, fun. And then uh, I'm still waiting on the written report from the consultant who we contracted to perform the feasibility on the trail study. I do expect that hopefully before the holidays. And uh, if so, we'll put that on the January agenda to be reviewed and discussed by the board. That's hot. Awesome. Thank you. By the way, can you guys hear me better? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That was much better. Yeah. Good. Hey, hey Eric, do you, um, just talking about the, the park maintenance structure, do we have a, uh, you know, obviously things can change, but do we have a sense of when we expect that to be completed and in, in, in operation? Yeah, significant completion is going to be of the now. Right, keep in mind, we're just talking about the building. We're still eyeing kind of end of January as significant completion, where uh, we'll actually be able to start kind of moving some things over there, and by February, really be operating out of there, and hopefully uh, be able to fully disassemble the temporary. 
uh, location that we have. Um, we were talking today to about kind of finalizing and putting out an RFP for the courtyards and uh, what that should look like in terms of uh, materials, adults, how about it, um, and give ourselves some options that we can pick and choose from uh, based on with the base bit of being the Western courtyard and then uh, some adults with various materials uh, as w and then the Eastern courtyard as well. So, and then once that is completed, uh, we'll really look then towards kind of the landscaping of the whole area as well. Okay. But significant completion for the construction of the building facility end of January, early February and then hopefully the courtyard's not too too uh, far behind that. Excellent. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Eric, will the windows be in by then? The, that's what's holding us up. That's the biggest supply chain challenge right now um, is the windows, even though they've been ordered long ago, they're not expected until mid to later January. So that's going to be, they're doing everything that they can up until that point. They'll seal it off with the uh, plastic so that way they can get the sheetrock in the conditioned space and do all of that. And then the last piece will be basically inserting the windows uh, uh, into the frames. So that's, 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 the, that's the one part we're still waiting on. I actually asked about that this morning. Uh, still no update in the hopes that, uh, hey, they're here early. That never happened. So uh, we're, that's, that's the piece that's kind of pushing the schedule back a little bit farther. All right. Anybody else? If you haven't walked by and checked it out, I encourage you to check it out. Um, steel has been placed, all the welds are in. Um, they're going to be doing the footings. Once the footings are finished, uh, they can start working on grading and then obviously uh, um, working towards close in and then close in inspection and getting everything else done inside. Um, but it's really, they've made tremendous progress. It's, it's, it's going to be a, a very functional, great uh, facility for our crew to use. Nice. Thank you. Any other comments, questions, anything from the public? One sec. Hi. Um, so thanks for the report. Um, uh, for the new directors who, who might not be aware, um, we had a very significant, um, a, a s several uh, significant uh, slide events uh, as a result of erosion along the Idleberry Trail and I also um, up on the ridge. Um, one of the concerns of this clearing um, uh, of material is that we're going to have more erosion problems and I didn't see any mention of erosion control uh, uh, measures being taken in that area. Um, I wonder if Eric could uh, uh, address that issue so we understand um, that it will be taken care of, that we're not going to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal claims as a result of our neglect of, of, of our trails. Eric? Uh, yeah, I'm Bill. I'm happy to speak to that if you'd like. Um, let's, let's have him finish his comments first. Okay. Well, I, I, I think my comments are contingent on whatever uh, the response is. Um, you, you know, um, one of the, I, I, will, I, I will make a few comments. Um, I have said in the past, uh, one of the positions that we really do need is, uh, I would call, call this person a caretaker or a ranger, um, not simply a maintenance supervisor, but somebody who really understands landscaping maintenance and would uh, address the concerns of all of our, what, 800 or 900 acres uh, that is under our care. Um, it seems to me that we're always kind of catching up. We always have to find an outside expert to address some of these issues. Uh, Eric mentioned the trail report. 
and it, it just it seems to me that this is this is the kind of capability that we really should have in 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 house that we don't have, and I would uh, urge the board to look towards a, another uh, managerial position that uh, can take care of more of the physical needs of the district uh, than uh, is currently being addressed. I'll, I'll have something to say more to say about this later. Thank, Thank you, you, Stephen. Um, <sighs> Eric, I guess his his erosion control based on uh, our fire safety. Um, if you want, yeah. What I can what I can that. tell you on that, Bill, is uh, right. you know, and even in the plans and in the NOE uh, that was filed, there was no ground disturbance uh, that was part of this. This was simply limbing, removing dead and uh, dead debris, as well as uh, some invasive species that were there. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not an expert in this, so I can't be taken at this. But I, what I can tell you is that. Uh, uh, there's less debris on the ground at this point in time uh, that's loose uh, and able to fall. It's been cleaned. It's been done well. Uh, and again, there ground disturbance was not an aspect of this project whatsoever. Okay. And my way of thinking on the second part of his comment was uh, hiring a new park person, probably on the lines of John of our park and rec president and his, you know, and board member, the two Johns. Um, I mean, th that just flies in the face of idiocy as far as I'm concerned. Well, I, it would be counter to previous decisions that were made when the park director position was eliminated by the board back in 2014. And it also, uh, what I can tell you is, all agencies that I know also hire and use outside consultants for various projects, including the gentleman who uh, we are using for this particular feasibility study uh, was actually recommended uh, originally through the open space district. So uh, yeah. uh, even districts much larger than ours are utilizing uh, outsourced uh, professionals uh, to do that type of work. Understood, but through the, the, all the years of commentary about waste of money, um, paying people so much money, paying, uh, anyway, I'll, I digress. Thanks, Eric. Welcome. Okay. Review the draft minutes of the fire commission meeting. Any questions? No, I just want to give a very simple, easy, report because it came to I came to realize that there's not a whole lot that I get to report on unless I want to take Chief's white report so I'm just going to keep it simple um, but I do want to say the one thing that I did take away from the fire commission meeting was that our chief is a very forward thinker and has us very prepared in case and ready for COVID outbreak within our um, our firehouse and just to know that we would be 100% supported um, should something happen. Mm. So if all of our firemen do come down with COVID and they have to be sent home, Chief yeah. already <laughs> thought about it. And then also how to come out of COVID and what of our prepared questions, you know, Chief White has already thought about Probably everything, <laughs> it sounded like. So there you go. Cool. So thank you. <clears throat> anything else? Nope. Anything from, anything from the Oh, wait, wait, wait. Can I just add? Sure. One is an awesome member that really, truly stepped up and um, was asking Eric for information. And he's just really gung-ho to jump in and be part of this commission so that's what we like to see mm -hmm. so, now i'm done yay okay um anything else anything from the public one second bill steven 
Yes. Um, well, um, uh, okay, you, you're, you guys are not. I, I heard the insulting comments, Bill, uh, that you th think it's idiotic to to hire somebody to look after our open space and our our parks, or, or and maybe maybe you ought to um, give the give it an opportunity to think about this. Really what I'm saying is we do not have expertise in in house. Now that expertise could be created from our staff. I mean we do have plenty of staff who could step up and can get some training and can take an active interest. Um, I am going to address something later on, um, but it really uh, I think you're missing the boat here. I mean, we're 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 three things: we're the park, we're the recreation, and we're we're the fire. And we really have good strength in recreation. Um, our fire department's good, and we, of course we have our administrative staff. Now, I I think that they could take on additional responsibilities. I mean, they technically they have the the. I mean, theoretically, they have the responsibility, but um, they do not seem to have the expertise or knowledge, and I, I guess that's really what I'm seeking. I, I think that, that I, I don't know who, who, who all within the staff could rise up and, and take on some of these additional responsibilities. But, uh, you know, Eric made a remark, well, they cleaned up all this stuff on the ground and it looks great up in the fire district. Obviously, Eric doesn't understand, or I, I, I should say, I, let me put this a different way. Um, picking up stuff off the ground is not the issue. It's the removal of, uh, of vegetation that causes the erosion issues. Um, you know, the vegetation holds on to the soil. So, I mean, it, that, that one comment alone really tells you that we re really need uh, some expertise in our open space. Our, our, our trails aren't getting done. We're, uh, I, I will bring up accessibility again. That is an issue that has com been completely ignored. And um, it, it really is important uh, uh, for the, the proper functioning of this district. Thank you, Stephen. On to the, uh, I don't suppose there's anybody else making a comment, Eric. No, from, sir. Okay. Um, I guess that was a comment on the fire commission. Anyway, uh, police officer, I mean, <laughs> chief officer, <laughs> fire department. Is that a request for aid? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, good evening, good evening uh, board Chief. of directors and everyone, <laughs> members of the public. And I'd like to open with a thank you to Director Kilkenny for the kind remarks. Um, I wish I really had a good grasp and, and complete handle on everything COVID. I just was trying to project ahead based on some of the things I'm, I'm witnessing and trying to get some answers so that I can plan appropriately. But um, I, I I appreciate that. Now you got me inspired to make sure I'm dialing it in so I don't have any missteps. <laughs> uh, aside from the missteps I made on the heading of our report tonight, my apologies when I turned it in to uh, District Manager Dreykesen. I was falling asleep, unfortunately, because I had a retreat the entire next day, and I see that I missed the date and some other heading issues. So I promise to, to pay closer attention for my next report. Um, hopefully my content was still, you know, fairly decent. But um, I'll start with the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority. Uh, this week, uh, Director Brown's meeting with the Advisory Technical Committee and some of the Operations Committee folks to discuss uh, a variety of things regarding our uh, CEQA and upcoming operations work plan for 2022. He also requested that any agency that has links available for projects that they've completed, submit those to him so that he can add it to the MWPA website so that everyone can kind of see what's taking place uh, within various agencies. And as I think uh, was mentioned earlier by Eric, the um, fuel reduction project along Idleberry Road, 
uh, has been complete. Uh, this is right proximal to the area where the goat grazing took place. This was a local project funded by MWPA, and I'm sure it's going to be one of many other projects we'll, we'll be able to look at and see with the excellent results from the thoughtful removal of the vegetation and the, um, the fuels that can contribute to rapid fire spread. And so given that, uh, my hat's off to Quinn, Kate Anderson, and some of the other staff who ensured that they delivered and the vendor actually cut in a responsible and thoughtful way as they approached doing what they were doing to ensure our fire roads were clear, but also cleared in a manner that was aesthetically pleasing, but also uh, environmentally sensitive as well. Um, moving over to, to COVID, I uh, just want to speak to a couple of things. Uh, one, given that I'm hearing we have a new mask mandate coming up uh, sometime tomorrow. Uh, the California Department of Public Health, I guess, has decided uh, through uh, Governor Newsom that we're going to be, for a 30-day period, required to wear masks indoors in all indoor public settings. There's some interpretation that I'm trying to work through with staff right now about whether or not that applies to fully vaccinated public safety personnel who um, have a separate order that was issued on November 1st. My thought is that that order applies to everyone. I don't think there's a distinction between um, public safety or other employees or other members of the public. So I want to make sure that that information is clearly understood from the county level before I confirm that our members while they're in the station, as an example, don't have to wear a mask when everyone is vaccinated. I know everyone's familiar with the new variant that's uh, emerged uh, and it's hit our shores here. Uh, and given that, I think that's what's prompted the extra precautions going forward for the next 30 days, given a lot of the travel that's gonna be taking place and a lot of the um, small social groupings that are gonna occur where they believe a lot of the COVID spread takes place. And so uh, given that, my encouragement is that everyone get the quick rapid tests that are available at Walgreens and other places, I believe it's called the Binax. Um, in 15 minutes, you can have a kind of a good clue as to whether or not you're testing negative or positive. And then you can move forward with your social gathering with a little more confidence that there's not going to be a, a, a transmission or an incident that, you know, someone can be infected. And so um, we did that for Thanksgiving. I think it worked out pretty well, especially when we wanted to protect uh, our family members and some of the more vulnerable elderly individuals and folks who actually had decided not to become vaccinated, which that's still something that I'm struggling with, but um, that's my own thing. Um, push right now to try to get more booster doses for everyone. And so I just wanted to uh, mention that as of a couple of weeks ago, it seemed that roughly only 25% of the population who's been vaccinated has actually taken a booster at this point. And so the, the concern there is whether or not there's going to be some vaccine efficacy that wanes over the course of the next few months if individuals don't follow up and take that booster, especially those individuals who may have taken a single dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine. I understand that that starts to erode uh, pretty quickly over the course of a several month window. And so while I don't have the details available to me right now, I believe one of our commissioners actually had provided some, some pretty compelling information about how quickly the vaccine's effectiveness can, can uh, dissipate. And so um, given that, um, I understand there's at least seven people hospitalized right now in Marin County. And that uptick and that increase is something that we're keeping a sharp eye on. The uh, I believe it was the county that uh, decided that they were going to push forward with trying to get more um, boosters and more vaccinations done. And I think that's, uh, let me see. Yeah, it's Thursday, December 9th, volunteers were requested to assist with, assist with point of distribution of the vaccine for the youth ages 5 to 11. And then opportunities for folks that needed second doses uh, at Novato High School on Saturday, December 18th, an upcoming opportunity and Sunday as well. So the volunteers were needed for not necessarily administering the vaccine, but just to make sure that there was assistance with traffic control, registration, some um, post-vaccination monitoring that takes place for roughly 15, 20 minute, win 20 minute window. Um, the county is now seeing approximately 40 or more cases per day. So that's certainly an increase from what we just saw just maybe three months ago, as an example, when things were starting to kind of reverse um, in a more confident manner. Now things are kind of 
taking a turn for a different direction. The great thing about the Omicron, if you want to say great thing in any way regarding a infectious disease, is that it may not be as damaging as the Delta variant and or the original COVID-19. And so while it's rapidly spreading, I'm not hearing of the number of deaths that we were hearing about with the other two, um, other two diseases. So anyway, more on that will sure to follow. Um, there's been some ongoing um, uh, debate about whether or not the vaccine should be mandated in public safety settings and in health healthcare settings. And so this month and next month, people are receiving terminated termination notices, whether they work in their private sector with an HMO or whether they're in a unified school district or public safety personnel, including law and fire. So this is um, certainly something that's going to be uh, contested for some months or years to come. So we'll see the outcome of that over time. Public ed. Uh, we had our emergency planning coordinator from San Rafael and our vegetation management specialist, Simon Wright, attend the Contempo Moran HOA meeting back in early November to discuss a variety of topics, including defensible space, our inspection program, evacuations, and signing up for emergency alert notifications, such as Alert Moran. Uh, my understanding is that there were approximately 30 to 40 individuals there. It seemed like it was very well attended, and from what I understand, it was a um, a lot of conversation that um, will now prompt some follow up as well. In addition to that, sorry if you can hear that pounding above me. I'm not sure what's going on in my house. I'll find out. Uh, at any rate, um, there was also a um, at St. Vincent School a fire evacuation open forum that took place on October 25th from rough, roughly 3:30 to 4:30, and again. This was something that may have been prompted by the last fire that occurred earlier this year. And the main topic involved evacua evacuation planning and fire prevention planning for K through 12. BC, Jason Hatfield, Mary Scramstad, one of our vegetation management specialists, and Reid al Zahir, who's a new emergency management employee, all presented on best practices and evacu evacuation planning, mitigation tactics, and recommend recommendations on how the school district could move forward. Uh, again, that was another discussion that seemed to be well received by those in attendance. And my understanding is that the emergency planning coordinator, Raid Al Zahir, will follow up with staff sometime in the next 90 days or so to see what the progress has been made and/or what other assistance he may be able to provide as they move forward with more preparedness efforts and discussions about responsibilities in emergency management. So stay tuned for more information on that in the early part of this coming year. Uh, AmeriCorps personnel. We had a rotation of a group of eight individuals who left just after, I think they left right around December 1st, if I'm not mistaken. But they spent Thanksgiving here. Uh, five of the eight were unable to go back home or you know, make it to the destinations that were kind of far removed from, from San Rafael and Marinwood. And so given that, they stayed here, but Dr. Mizrock from the San Rafael Fire Commission and a member of the Fire Foundation, along with Captain Bob DeLambert, uh, generously again gave some uh, Thanksgiving meals to those individuals to kind of just express their appreciation for their volunteer work that they've done in our communities. And so that's a picture of some of the, the youth there. There's a group of 10 working actively right now, and they'll be uh, finishing up their work in about seven or eight days. Um, again, Given the, the weather, given the, um, the type of work that they're doing, you know, really phenomenal that they're stepping up to try to help out and, and volunteer this late in the year. Um, but, you know, granted, the last couple of years, we haven't had this kind of weather uh, in December. So this is probably something that, you know, we'll have to revisit later, whether or not it really makes sense to bring them in to continue to do vegetation work when we're getting the kind of rainfall we're receiving. So, um, also took a snapshot of some training that took place with our members from uh, Engine 58. We had a recruit academy in San Rafael where seven members just graduated this past Saturday. And Engine 58, including Captain Brackett, Captain Papanikola, and Engineer Jeff Smith and Firefighter Wills Kelly, uh, provided those new recruits with some understanding on uh, tool use and especially some self-preservation safety tool use in the form of safe, uh, uh, shelters, fire shelters. Those wildland shelter deployments 
actually save lives. Um, and so the, the goal was to ensure they know how to use and deploy those shelters within the 30 second window of time, because there's instances where you don't have very much time at all. You have to learn how to clear the ground out in front of you, what direction to orient yourself in, ironically head first toward the fire, and then spread your arms and legs as wide out as you can and try to make that look like a jiffy pop popcorn that's been full of pop popcorn, where it's kind of just uh, able to provide a radiant heat barrier, if you will. So that being said, that's some very critical training that we provide our members. And generally speaking, they use uh, shelters that are no longer, they're usually expired or just normally shelters that you can pull out and simulate. But um, very important training and our, our staff was there to help them along. So that's very admirable. Uh, November responded to 108 calls, 14 of those were canceled in route. So that dropped us to roughly 94 calls and two thirds of those were medical incidents. None involved a suspected or confirmed COVID-19 case. And the department did not respond to any fires in the month of November. So, um, but again, as I state all the time, five minutes, 44 seconds, five minutes, 28 seconds, five minutes plus, we're always sub six minutes. And that's, that's huge. And so it's a testament to our members and their, their district familiarization, but also their um, commitment to getting out the door quickly. Once they get the information they need, they're en route to provide the help they need wherever they're going. And so um, kudos to our personnel. And that's the end of my report, unless there's some additional questions. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chief. Anybody? No, I just want to say <clears throat> for coming to our Santa, to visiting on Saturday when Santa was around. And thank you, Eric, for driving Santa around. That's it. I enjoyed it. My son did as well. Thank you for having us. Oh, that's right. Yes. <laughs> uh, anybody? No questions? Anything from the public? Yeah, one second. Steven. Yes. Uh, hi, Chief. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad you did some of the, the public outreach w with Contempo, Marin, and um, uh, I, uh, the St. Vincent's uh, School. I was hoping that uh, your department or uh, could uh, conduct a public safety meeting um, uh, this year to t talk about the fire as well as s the safety tips. Uh, something that you d have already done I at Silvera, uh, I I'm sorry, uh, St. Vincent's, but do it uh, within the Marinwood CSD. As from what I understand, um, the last major fire was in the 70s um, and basically it took out the hillside and threatened homes, although I don't think uh, we lost any homes during that time. Um, it's something that is on the mind of everybody. Um, as we mentioned uh, before uh, in previous months, you know, there was some communication issues. People were unsure of what they should be doing. Um, a lot of people looked up at the, the smoke and, and decided not to evacuate. And uh, I believe uh, an authoritative discussion on, you know, the plans for evacuation is certainly in order after this latest event. And um, I, I hope you take this matter seriously um, and uh, see it as part of, uh, of the money that we, we, we are spending um, for wildfire uh, safety in our valley. Um, I, I think it could only benefit the fire department um, and, uh, and you personally, quite frankly, because you know we had a police chief for many, many years who grew up here and I'm sure a lot of people would like to get to know you. Um, so I, I say, say this uh, it would be good for everybody uh, to have that public safety meeting. Thanks. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, anybody else, Eric? Um, no. 
I don't believe so. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I don't. No, I no. Okay. It, it does not appear so. All right. Um, if anybody has any, if nobody has anything else to say, I want to say Merry Christmas and have a Happy New Year, Chief. Thank you. Merry Christmas yes. and Happy New Year to you all as well. Stay warm, stay dry, and stay safe. And we'll see you in the new year. Absolutely. All right, you Thanks, too. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. On to park and recreation matters. We have the draft minutes of the park and recreation commission meeting. This is a review. So um, I will, re and this is, this is basically, I'm just going to review um, the, the minutes of the meeting that we had as of November 23rd. I know there's, there's quite a bit that's happened since then. And I know Luke will speak to that, but um, Item of note, um, we welcomed a new commissioner, Michael Benish, to the team. Um, he's got, he has, a, he has an excellent background in, um, in public service, and he, um, he also lives in Lucas Valley Estates, um, and he had some excellent questions. I think he's going to be a really, um, a, a wonderful addition to the commission, so we're excited to welcome him. Um, we also um, talked about the um, a bit about the the, the playground um, survey, which um, was at that time about to be launched. We've since um, heard from Eric that it's been it's been successful and it's been well received, and many are responding to it. Um, outside of that. Um, there was um, there was talk about um, a, a a trailway that um, goes between the the park and um, some apartment housing near Marinwood Market that's not accessible now but might be in the future and just some concerns surrounding that um, and I think that, that that's really it it was a pretty brief meeting this time mm -hmm. thank you thank you any comments. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Can I just ask that when you mentioned that last trailway, is that the one that we're having inspected or is that a different trail that you're, that was being discussed? Um, it was the, I think it was, it was, it was the same trail that, that is being inspected. So the one between the apartment complexes in Marinwood, Okay. And what, and I'm just, just so I'm grasping it fully. What, what was that conversation? Um, the conversation was just, you know, some, some questions surrounding, you know, what would, what would that do as far as just traffic coming into the park and what would that look like? Okay. Should that be opened up to the gotcha. public? Thank you. Hmm. Yep. I don't know. I'm confused. Any other comments? What, what are you confused about? Well, we're having the feasibility study to even put that trail in. Right there, I, I think. Yeah. Bill, and if we, if you don't mind, um, the Go ahead. the uh, there is just some concern uh, around the idea of it providing a. You know, very uh, other access, other uh, means for trans. You know, kind of on the transient side, uh, and increase into the kind of hillsides where there already have been spotted in times past. Uh, there's just some some general concern on uh, if that trail would then kind of increase. Uh, you know, not only put like into you know some of these smaller parks, but then also uh, encourage kind of some of the uh, transients to have an easier way up into those hillsides for encampments and such. Hmm. We currently have any transient encampments in our open space? Not that we are aware of currently, Chris, no, but we have had some in the past. Right. Okay. We've had them on top of that hill. Right. I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the freeway, correct? Um, 
Yeah, kind of up above the freeway, that whole hillside there above the scales, uh, kind of abutting where this trail is being proposed. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Anything from the public? Yeah, one second, please. Uh, yeah, now we're talking just about the the uh the report uh is that correct eric the park and rec commission minutes 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 okay so um i did record that and you know once again it would it's very easy for you to hit record on these meetings so uh the access uh to the information on the meetings can be enjoyed by our full community um I, I honestly don't know what the issue is. Um, uh, you know, you're not saying anything terrible. Um, and uh, people may learn a little bit more about what's being planned for the district. Um, there was a mention, um, and I think, Eric, you brought it up, that uh, Luke was going to present something on uh, the uh, fireman's picnic area. Um, which uh, Lisa uh, forgot to mention. Um, and uh, Luke hasn't spoken tonight. Maybe he was planning to bring it up tonight. I, I don't know, but certainly like to know a little bit more about that. Um, that's, that's all I have to say. I, 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 you know, thanks for the report, Lisa. I, I think you did a, a decent job, but uh, there really was more to the meeting, and if anyone wants to see it, you can watch it at double speed on SaveMarinwood.org. Um, it was only a 40-minute meeting, so it was very quick to get through. Uh, anyhow, that's it. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Can I, can I just add one thing? Because um, I know Stephen wasn't at our last meeting, that we kind of added, Stephen, we added a little bit of feedback from Lisa and I who represents who are the liaison so our report I just again FYI our report does not replace Chief White's report or Luke's report it's just what we feel as liaisons what we want to present to the board of what we found like a, our our own recap so it's not like she's replacing Luke's report tonight or I replaced Chief White. It's just a little recap that we wanted to provide because so thank you. Thanks Kathleen. I think I think that, that clarification was very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so. Okay. On to the park and rec activity report. Luke. Yeah I hear you Luke. How about now? Uh, there we go. All right. Eric and I are uh, trying to be twins tonight with our audio. Yeah. Don't look um, to the right and talk, and you'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, thanks. Hello, everyone. Hey, so um, I'll start with, uh, with some of the recreation happenings of the last month. Um, the biggest uh, sort of event that we had was on this. Just this last Friday, we had our big um, holiday concert under the stars. Um, here outside the community center called the Jingle Bell Jazz and we had um, some live jazz holiday music um, out on the on the patio outside the reception hall. Um, we had activities for for kids to do. Uh, we had refreshments and we also had uh, Santa Claus on the premises doing photos uh, with kids and it was our first time doing an event like this at this time of the year um, sort of a a uh, blend of, of our winter, our normal Winterfest event and, and some sort of wintertime music in the park. Um, we were just trying to find a way to do uh, a holiday event that didn't bring um, uh, hundreds of people indoors, which seemed a little irresponsible um, at this moment in time. So um, thankfully the weather cooperated um, or it would have uh, been a little, a little tricky, but um, it was a wonderful event. We had a great turnout. Um, I think we estimated today that we had between 300 and 400 people uh, show up. Um, they were, uh, they're watching the, the, the music, going to see Santa and, and just playing around the, the community center in general. 
Um, so I'm really proud of the of the recreation staff for being able to um, strategize a, a new event to to accommodate the current circumstances, and um, and it was a really successful and enjoyable time in spite of it being um, very frigid and cold out. Thankfully, people were dressed very warmly, and we pulled out all the heat lamps and the fire pits and everything we could to try to help out with that. So um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun, and, and we'll definitely consider. Uh, doing repeats of that uh, in, in the future, is, it, it went really well. Um, so that, that was uh, this, this last Friday. This Thursday, we were wrapping up um, a, sort of a new tradition that we started, I believe, last year um, with Letters to Santa, where um, we have a North Pole mailbox stationed here at the community center, um, and we're accepting letters to Santa and delivering them. Um, and making sure that Santa Claus um, responds. So that's been a really a fun program to, to offer here. And a big thanks to Carolyn Sullivan for um, taking the role of uh, helping facilitate all that and, and playing the role of Santa's secretary and making sure all the letters get, um, get to Santa and, and get back to the people that, um, you know, the, the responses back to them. So that's been great. And that's gonna wrap up um, this, this Friday, uh, or this Thursday will be our last day uh, doing that before Christmas. Um, as usual, we will be running a winter break camp over the school holiday and uh, the enrollment for that's looking looking very strong. We'll have a bunch of our summer camp staff um, in college and high school who are back in town or um, off school on break that will be helping to, to run those programs. And um, that should be a lot of fun. Robin and, and her crew are putting the final touches on the plans for that. And it's looking to be a good, um, a good camp program for, for those two weeks. We're hoping the, the weather allows some outdoor time, but um, if it's raining, we'll, we'll have plenty to do inside. So that should be a lot of fun. Um, and staff are also hard at work on um, our next, our spring summer catalog of programs. The, the next Marinwood review um, will be out in mid to late January and uh, staff are finalizing all of our classes and events and camps and pool programs for the spring and summer. Um, and that's all coming together. Um, we'll be you know, releasing that information as soon as it's all compiled and finalized. So stay, stay tuned for all that. On the uh, parks maintenance side of things, um, I wanna echo uh, something that Steven said earlier and just, um, yeah, it would be wonderful to have a dedicated uh, open space um, expert on staff. Um, I, that, that would be a lovely asset to have. And um, I think that would be a great thing to, to work towards. And I'm definitely, interested in, in continuing to, to learn about open space management. And, um, and I'm, well, something that struck me while thinking about that is just um, our, our whole organization is, is very small and our department is small and uh, we do have limited resources. Um, and into this goal in the last um, few years is uh, how great, Marin County in general um, is it coming together and sharing resources and sharing expertise. And we are constantly between Eric and myself and the uh, fire chief and our other staff members um, in touch with other agencies, whether it be San Rafael's vegetation management personnel, or um, we've got uh, people from the, the straw program from Marin resources conservation district coming out and donating their time to, to, to share expertise with us and give us um, a lot of feedback and um, provide direction on, on how to approach some of our open space areas as we try to protect uh, them and protect our residents from the various hazards associated with open space. And so uh, it's been, been really cool. And um, Eric has been particularly good at reaching out and, and taking advantage of this amazing community of resources that we have in all these little communities throughout Marin. So um, I would love to, to continue to increase our knowledge and, and our staff members' knowledge and, and we continue to you know, work on that and, and learn more and more. But uh, um, it has been great to have so many people, especially on our Parks and Rec Commission, we've got, we've got expertise there and we're constantly in touch with all these people. So um, that's been a really, a really nice um, asset that we, that we have here. In spite of being small, we have a huge community of, of expertise to take advantage of. And, and that's been something that's been uh, only increasing every, every year since I've been um, working here. So that's been great. But um, in-house, uh, our staff have um, been focusing on this last month on uh, landscaping, uh, updating a little bit of landscaping at Creekside Park. Um, we've, uh, building maintenance has had, there's been a few issues with plumbing and electrical that our staff were able to diagnose and repair 
um, without needing to um, you know outsource that or bring anybody in, which was which was good. Um, our building is very old, and we do have uh, issues that come up from time to time from uh, old pipes, old wires, and and uh, our staff thankfully have gotten very good at um, diagnosing and troubleshooting some things that are not always by the by the book or, or obvious. So. Um, I'm very grateful to, to have some of that uh, experience on staff with us. Um, we had a bunch of prep work to do for this concert, which included just putting lights on all the trees and all over the building and all over the patio on, uh, on Friday. Some of you, I think, saw, saw it all lit up, and it was, it was pretty impressive once it got dark on Friday, just how um, exciting and uh, magical the whole community center looked for, for the concert. And, um, so staff spent a lot of time helping put, put all that up and make sure it was safe and make sure we didn't start any fires and, and that all the bulbs were going to stay lit throughout the night. So um, it really, really did look amazing. And um, it, it was a lot of effort for a one and a half hour concert, but um, I think it was uh, everyone had a good time and it was, it was worth it. So um, that, that was one thing that, that we did focus a lot on the last couple of weeks. Um, and we also added a, a new dog waste station at the Queenstone Fire Road entrance off of Miller Creek. Uh, we've seen a lot of, of increased foot traffic and bike traffic and, and hiking traffic uh, on those on that road and up to the new Pawnee Ridge Trail. And um, when we've seen the need for um, a place for people to throw their dog waste bags and other trash in that area. And so uh, we're able to add another station there and add that to the routine for um, regular uh, trash pickup. And um, mm -hmm. so that, they've added that in and that's been going well and um, has also helped keep some of that trash uh, from ending up on the trail. So um, proud of those guys for getting that done quickly. Um, and uh, we've got a lot of other projects coming up, but um, I'm not trying to, don't wanna to talk too much longer, but please feel free to let me know if you guys have any questions about uh, any Parks or Rec happenings. No, I just wanna commend you guys for last Friday. That uh, was pretty good. And the young families with little kids showing up t at least 20 minutes, half an hour ahead of time, waiting for it to start. That was amazing. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. It was really fun to see the, the turnout. It was incredible, Luke. You and your team did um, an outstanding job. And um, I was there with my two young kids who were running around trying to tear things up. And it was just, it was such a, it was a fun event for I think so many in the community. And um, I think the, the kids, especially just the, the magic of Santa, um, having not really been able to experience that for the last two years, it was really a treat um, for my kids and I know so many, so thank you. I have to admit that even though I got a reminder that day, I still, God. <laughs> um, the but reminder I did, of the reminder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I totally forgot. Um, but I do thank you for all you guys do and all the hard work. And um, I just noticed, well, I didn't notice, but I want to thank you also for keeping the algae out of the pool. I greatly oh, appreciate Because um, I just read that looking down. Um, but I do have one question. Do you guys have a backup plan just in case for March for a raise a glass or is it outside again? And do you do, you know? No, um, as of right now, we, we've done raise a glass for, I think, I don't know what I, if I mentioned how many years we're at on this one. I think this might be our 11th year um, or 10th or 11th year of doing raise the raise a glass event. Um, and, we, and it's rained uh, a few of the years and um, we, this will be a mostly indoor event. And um, okay. if, if we are able to take advantage of the patio, uh, we absolutely will. Um, and we've, most years we've, we've been able to do that. It's been definitely uh, watching the weather every, every five minutes on, on some years, but, um, uh, but that is an event that we can do fully inside if need be. Okay. Can I have a reminder on that one too, Eric? <laughs> Oh, I bet you you won't forget that one, Kathleen. <laughs> no. <laughs> the same. So, thank you. Luke, is there any chance, it sounds like you guys were super busy, and I know the weather hasn't really cooperated necessarily, but is there any chance you guys got over to the fireman's picnic area to kind of assess what's there and, and if, those, if there's any resources that could be reallocated? Oh yeah, Chris, I'm sorry. I ran myself a note to, to bring that up. I was planning on talking to the commission last month, um, you know, bring that up and, and give a, a brief 
uh, talk about that. And I ended up um, not being able to make it to that meeting. So okay. that sort of got, those plans got derailed. But um, yeah, we're out at the fireman's picnic area all the time. We go, um, it's a, one of the stops on the uh, thrice weekly trash pickup. We go and check that area um, just for general um, state of affairs and debris and to check on things um, on, a, on a weekly basis. And it is a, a highly utilized spot. I mean, it's not a huge destination like some of our other parks are where people right. are coming from, from out of town. There's no parking, there's no bathroom, there's no sign, there's, it's not really on the map. And so um, it is kind of like a, a, a little bit of a hidden gem uh, from Marinwood, but um, it does get a lot of use by lots of different uh, individuals, groups, and, and yeah, kid, there's definitely uh, the instances of, of kids hanging out there potentially after park hours, we do we do get the occasional bouts of graffiti and and you know small amounts of uh, vandalism here and there, but um, nothing really beyond what we, what we see in some of our other areas as well. Um, but yeah, it's a spot we use throughout the summers for our summer camps. We do take uh, camps out there for different activities. We've had some of our specialty camps over the years uh, utilize that that area all summer. Um, we have had certain classes meet out there um, historically, uh, depending on the season. Um, for, ver for various things, but um, yeah, I'd say it's, we, we count it as one of our parks um, that that just is um, you know more of a natural setting, and the the tables and you know things that are out there were, were put there by design, and um, and so as far as I mean, we'd definitely be open to if someone wanted to to use that area for something new, looking at what that would be. But we do count that as a resource when we're planning our camps, planning our our after school program activities it is factored in it and it does get used regularly by by our programs and i know the, the general public is out there um frequently as well um so it used to be i mean a big there used to be a big annual fire um fighter barbecue that took place right. there, and they'd actually drive the trucks out there on the trail and um and that was a, a big deal and um that that is since you know ceased to happen but um the, the area is a, it's a, I think it's a considerably a pretty special place that people still enjoy using. So, um, I mean, I'm mean, curious what your thoughts are, but that, that's sort of a, my approach to that. No, area. no, no. My, my whole thing was, I just know the, the few times that I've gone by, there's like just some stuff, stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll walk through it again. And if I have any specific questions, I can ask them. Sounds good. Um, you, you did mention, um, that Queenstone is seeing a lot more foot and bike traffic, um, you know, obviously for, for a variety of reasons. Um, has there ever been any discussion? I know we haven't had it since I've been on the board, but any discussion about adding things like uh, tables or anything at some, there's some pretty nice stopping points that would be off the, off the road. So it's not like they would inhibit, you know, a fire response or anything, anything like that. Has there ever been been any discussion about that it hasn't not, not any patients like this i haven't i've never heard that brought up that would be interesting um definitely not looking to add another maintenance stop way up the trail no, totally. for, for our staff but um but you know i think that there would there are definitely some lovely spots where you know a bench or something would, would i think would be a nice addition for sure right no i was definitely thinking more in the in the pack it in pack it out maybe putting you know like a, a picnic to a large picnic table or something like that just in a few spots up the hill. Um, I'd be curious to know what, what John might think of that being that he was so involved with the Ponte build. Yeah, likewise. Thank you very much, Luke. I appreciate it. Thank you. Any other questions? Anything from the public? <clears throat> Sorry, no, one second. Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, first, I, I want to address uh, Kathleen and uh, Lisa's uh, concern or answer to my concern about the reports. You know, I don't, I don't want you to take this personally. I, I do appreciate your reports and they, they are helpful. But, you know, anybody who is going to report on a meeting is going to report from their own perspective. And my uh, uh, it really wasn't to diss your reporting ability, but to say, hey, look, we have the technology. It's very easy to use. You press record for the meetings, and we've, we've got a record of what is occurring, what is being said at the meeting. So it seems like a very simple fix. Um, with regards to um, 
I also want to talk about uh, Luke responded to to my concerns about having expertise, open space expertise, and I think. Um, you know, my my frustration is I see the excellence in in our rec programs, and I ask myself, well, why can't we do that in open space? That's it's it's a huge resource. It's uh, people want to use it. They are they are using it, but it doesn't seem like we have the same level of excellence in our open space that we do have in our rec uh, department. And I'm glad that he's looking into. Um, becoming a little bit more educated in this area um, but really uh, what my remarks are it's it's I'm saying really we need a, a managerial uh, a little bit more hands-on managerial um, oversight in the open space it seems to me that our um, parks department is kind of left on their own and they pretty much report what they're doing but there's um, not as much direction as uh, could happen. And I will give you a, a concrete example that may be a bit embarrassing. Uh, about a month ago, I think at our last meeting, um, uh, Chris brought, said, hey, uh, who took down, uh, I think, the sumac uh, uh, next to our tennis courts uh, 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 at Miller Creek? And you said, oh, well, oh. that was our staff. Uh, we're going to pick that up and it's been sitting on the ground for over a month and I'm just wondering okay I understand people are busy but what that tells me is no one is is you know pushing some of these projects along and um, um, I, I think it's a, a good example I mean it, it's it's not just Luke it, it also should be Eric that uh, uh, is mo monitoring what's going on. So um, we do need a bit a bit of help in our uh, parks department. Thanks. Thank you, Stephen. <clears throat> okay. Hello. Eric? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I don't know. It was kind of weird stuff happening. Uh, on to uh, board member items of interest. Anybody? I'd be interested in finding out, um, you know, are there, again, I totally agree with Luke. I do not, the intention is not to add any maintenance. Uh, you know, it's not like we're going to drive the trucks and dump trash from the top of Queenstone but there are some pretty exceptional spots uh, along the our trails for uh for hikers and bikers to enjoy um the incredible views that we have up there without having to like sit on the ground or you know some broken up concrete that, that exists in some of those places so i'd be interested in looking at open space and seeing how we could could maybe add i'm talking very basic like picnic tables in strategic locations for people to enjoy their uh, their the visitation of our open space. You want that on? I'm I'm just saying maybe an agenda uh, item that or would be a, a park and rec commission ask to okay. to take a peek at that and and just to see you know I mean to me it would be you know obviously when the when the if it were feasible and we had the money. Uh, it would be when those trails are, are you know, drivable again, which they're probably not going to be for a while, given our our winter. Um, but I mean, I my hikes alone that I'm thinking of, I could see dropping four or five tables strategically. It wouldn't be that much money, and it would be awesome. Uh, I wrote it down. I'll definitely uh, pass it on and see if we can't have a discussion amongst the commission on this. Uh, just keep in mind, they don't meet again until the end of January. Yeah, totally, totally. And to your point, heavy equipment's not going out there moving these things this time of year anyway nope. Chris. but i'll certainly run it by and john is the senior natural resources planner for uh, the open space district and then john toon obviously who's a retired park superintendent i'm sure he'll have a lot of good thoughts on it as will the other members of the commission so right. happy to uh happy to put that there appreciate it thank you so much yeah um, 
so I have one item of interest as well to add um, just whenever we can an update on where we are with um, with looking at cell phone coverage in our community yeah, and the lack like of it. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of what steps we can we can take to move, move forward with it, getting more. Yeah, hold on one second. I'm just writing this down. Um, update on lack of cell coverage. And uh, I'm just going to write here uh, options for advocacy. Sure. As in advocacy to the carriers. Um, sure. Anybody else? Thank you. I have one, and it's kind of a. Is there any way to get a little bit of an update now that we will be um, putting these side yards out to bid? Um, kind of an update of where we are on our current budget and, you know, any how much we've spent so far, how much we have in the bank um, to still spend, like just a kind of an update on where we are with the current build. Yep. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Anything from the public? Uh, yeah, hold on, Bill. The, uh... Other thing I just wanted to kind of bring up, not necessarily a request, and it was just more of an item of interest. Um, it's touched on very briefly by Kathleen, but for those of you who are home, when we drove by Saturday, uh, was a large uh, Santa's annual visit, although he wasn't able to come to town last year with the fire department. Uh, I certainly want to recognize the crew that was on duty that day with Captain John Papa Nicolau and engineer uh, Jeff Smith and firefighter paramedic Wills Kelly. Um, who followed along the entire day and amazingly didn't have a single call during the entire event. Um, Chief White came at lunchtime uh, and he joined in from that point on for the afternoon. And then uh, most importantly, just recognizing um, a longtime commissioner on the fire commission, as well as uh, at, with the volunteer department, uh, Greg Stilson, um, as well as our newest commissioner and also long time with the volunteer fire department, um, John Surratt, who have really just put a lot of uh, passion into this project for the past several years. Um, and then recognizing Robin who helped uh, round up some elves to give Santa a hand along the way. Uh, it was a great day. We recognized weather was gonna be a challenge and we actually hit, I would say probably 80% of all of Marin Woods starting at 9 a.m. in Lucas Valley Estates making our way through uh, um, up and down the streets there uh, through CSA 13 breaking the woods uh, it was just it was a fun day I was uh, it was a privilege to be able to to drive the truck uh, moving Santa along and uh, we just a lot of great feedback and so just thank you to everybody involved in that um, it was a it was a, as it always is it was a great day so I was very happy to be a part of it thank you Thank you for saying howdy as you drove by. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> Thank you for being loud at my house, even though I wasn't here to enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, well, you but weren't I, the only board member who wasn't there, but we tried to wake you up anyway. Um, but I do want to, <laughs> I do want to tell you that the whole community would definitely appreciates you switching gears and doing all of Marinwood on Saturday and trying to get as much in and having everyone stay longer, or whatever your projected time frame was in the beginning to try to see as many children as possible. And because yeah, I know we, we went nonstop basically from <laughs> 9 a.m. to about 4.15. Um, yeah. And after that, it was starting to get dark. And unfortunately, people had to uh, get going home. Uh, normally, they break it into two days, but we knew Sunday wasn't going to happen with the weather. So we just we pushed hard. And uh, uh, according to folks who've done this for years past, it, we've never come close to doing that much of Marin Wood in an entire day. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was uh, understood. It was sad we couldn't go up and down every single street, but uh, we did the best we could with what we had. Cool. Thank you very much. Was there, was there some was there some sort of like a note, like some sort of a communication that this was going to be happening? Because I wasn't, I wasn't home. At the fire. Oh. 
<laughs> well, no, it, I, it did. It did go out via some of our social media channels as well, and there were certainly people who knew. And we kind of said, you know, window of like nine to three. So I know it went out. It probably could have been a little bit better. It was really kind of uh, put together in a few days leading up to it with all the confirmation that we could make it happen. It certainly requires kind of a large volunteer effort to put it all together and to get all the pieces in place. So it was. Uh, and then as far as uh, once we were out there, if you were within a six block radius of where Santa was, <laughs> you knew he was around because uh, they had the sirens going and the loudspeakers and all the, all the like. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Anything uh, we we public? missed it, unfortunately, but um, it sounds like it was awesome. Yeah, it was great. A lot, a lot of people chased us down too. Uh, or drive to you. Yeah. Good. Uh, anyway, public comment. Bill, you ready? I'm ready. All right. Steven. Yeah. Um, some really great ideas uh, there, Chris, for open space. Uh, you know, uh, a project like what you're talking about is really quite easy to do um, with, with uh, you can get recycled planks, um, uh, up in Petaluma, uh, there, there's a salvage place. Uh, you could buy them for 50 bucks a piece and you could make as many benches as you want. One of the issues uh, that I really uh, desperately want the board to consider is how uh, you're delivering services to the community. We do great with families and I, 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 uh, I think that's terrific. Uh, it makes it a nice place to live. However, we have more than just families here. And, um, you know, having some more park benches, uh, places to gather, like uh, the fireman's picnic area, are very important for um, the community members that you guys don't see on a regular basis because they, they don't have kids in school um, and they don't come to these. Um, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the parties uh, that uh, happen over in the community center. Um, I, I think the board, if the board would get out in the public and, and make themselves known, I, I think they will find this for themselves. Uh, with regards to the firemen's picnic area, I just want to say it's an absolutely wonderful area. I live close by there. I've had some music groups meet in there. Um, there's parties in there. We've had uh, block parties in there, and it's just a, a wonderful place because it's it's large, it's protected, and it's really the only place uh, that uh, the community can call its own. Um, but you know, as we're spending money on all these other things, we really just need to uh, keep in mind that the basics, like porta potties like uh, benches are really, really important for the quality of our uh, park. Um, and uh, so I ask that you revisit your priorities in 2022. Thank you, Stephen. So if that is all, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I motion to adjourn. Second. <sighs> Thank Call you. A... Oh, go on. Sorry. Tiffany. President Shea. Aye. Director Case. Aye. Director Kilkenny. Aye. Director Ruggieri. Aye. Thanks. All I can say is everyone have a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And Merry I look Christmas forward to passing the gavel to Lisa on January 11th. Thank you for being on the board president for my first year, Bill. I'm here to yes. serve. <laughs> serve what exactly? <laughs> <laughs> um, wine, wine on March 5th. Uh. <laughs>
Nah, <laughs> you all. Everybody have a have a wonderful holiday. Thanks everybody for all you do. Thank for you the, for the district in your in your yeah. efforts. It's always appreciated. And uh, thank you, Eric. And, you guys uh, we will for sure. Do you want to um hold on? Um, now that we're adjourned, do you want to stop the recording and then give Chris because he's the tech guy, the host? I don't think he. I don't think he can give me the host. Recording stopped. Uh, yeah, no, whatever you guys, uh, you should do that offline. Okay, yeah. perfect. Great. Are you going right. to email us, Chris? Do you, I don't have your emails. Do you guys yeah. want to text me your emails really fast? I don't have your phone number. Uh, it is, it's. <laughs> going to go. It's, it's public. It's 415-250. This is so great. 5443. You can find it on the Marinwood Community Services District website. <sighs> Oh but my it's God! So much easier to Everybody's just me. there. Yeah. Wait, Chris, do you need my my email? Just I think so. Um, why don't you guys quickly text me a good email for you? And this is definitely non-district business, so we can talk about it right. for five minutes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Cool. Good night, all. all right. All right. Good night. Thanks. Bye. Good night. They closed your email for a Zoom. Okay.